Podcast Ranger. It's the Joel and Phil episode! Woo! Yeah, Emily might be joining us for the main show later. Because she's not feeling well. So. And Gar just fucked up this week! Yeah, it's his first week of, like, living back in Dunville, so... I know! Just miss him. I'm here! Hooray! Yeah, I'll be here next week, though. Oh. That's bad. That's bad. It'll be back the week after. That's good! But it comes with a free faggot! <laughs> the week will have potassium benzene. <laughs> that, that week we'll be discussing but we'll be discussing potassium benzene. I'm impressed you remember that line. Yeah. <laughs> That's bad. That's bad. <laughs> Welcome to Extra Extra Cast Ranger, the show where we talk about news in the Togiverse. Yep. I'm Blue Caster, he's Grey Caster. With glasses to match. I, yeah, I'm the greatest guy. And I'm the blue boy. Are you Grey Caster Jerry? How are you? I don't think so. I mean, he's a knight. They would have, by default, silver I mean, armor. Yeah, they're more chrome. Chrome <laughs> or silver. Chrome caster? Yeah. <laughs> I have the ability to project what I'm seeing onto a television. Exactly. Um. So, news. I got the revised driver. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's cool Big, pretty. stampy boy. It has 50 on it. Yes, we know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that owned a piece of history. Um, what's cool is... Anything's a piece of history if you argue hard enough. I, I, as the, as I've gotten older in age and, you know, the pandemic, uh, happens, I, I've put on a little bit of weight. Um, thankfully going back to work has actually made me lose a bit more weight, so I'm glad about that. I'm, like, just shy of 200 pounds. So. Yes, you got the Bato stamp. Uh, yes, I did get the He also stamp. has Eagle and Megalodon. There you go. But where's Taka and Tora? No. <gasps> There better be a tiger one. Actually, there is. Oh, there's there's an eagle, but not hawk. So. Yeah. Um. But anyways, so you know, PX belts don't fit me as well as they used to. Because I remember like 10, 11 years ago, I was able to wear a double driver without modifications. That's how skinny I was at some point. Um. But no, like even with mods, like the belt's still gonna look like stupid on me. So thankfully, Toku Collectibles uh is releasing a CSM version of the Revice driver belt and so i pre-ordered it and it will come out next month you know i just noticed hmm? bata is the only stamp with the name in japanese the other animal names are all english oh yeah you're right i don't know why they did that yeah, yeah maybe like just when they just say grasshopper maybe that's why because it was too long or it could have been like hoppa or that oh uh, yeah so i got the revised driver it's cool maybe it's in japanese I don't, I don't think we've heard the sound for it yeah but, uh, but if if it is, then that means there's inconsistencies in which are English and which are Japanese. Fucking again! Yeah, I hate that. But I like I like the belt. It's pretty and it's it's cool functioning. Uh, the only thing I don't like is that like when you turn it on, it doesn't go like revise driver. Yeah. So it, just, it, it basically just lights up the belt. The, dri the driver only has a light where for the fucking etch a sketch screen. But it's interesting. It, the the sounds won't activate from the stamp if you don't have the belt on. So yeah, there's some cool. sort of magnet in there, I think. So that's that's kind of cool. Uh, yeah. So because I wonder if we could trigger it with other magnetic things, like we did with like the ghost driver oh, and the God. metals and shit. I remember, I remember when I had the Wizard Infinity Ring or uh, block scene, and I like put it against the, the axe, axe caliber, and it yeah. worked, and I was like, ah! yeah. And I found it was the magnet that activates it. So. Yep. Um, but yeah. So, hi. All right, let's get into news. Cool. First. The opening theme for Revice has been put on streaming services. It's fucking great. It's a banger. It's fucking K-pop. <laughs> I'm kind of sad that we got zero one again. We've been hearing this theme song, or this insert song, leading up until the debut of Revice, and we all, we all assumed, or rather I did, I don't know if anyone else did, uh, assumed that was going to be the opening, and it was a pretty good song, and I got addicted to it. And then the actual opening comes down, and it's a different song. So the, the song that I thought was the opening is going to be a fucking insert song. They did it again, just like with Zero One. I can't wait for the opening. The opening is probably going to be really dope. Yeah, we're going to watch that as soon as it ha happens tomorrow. Uh, also, in great news, and I was on my way to Walmart, uh, on my way here today, I stopped by at Walmart, and I am so happy I found this because I've been talking about it for fucking ever. But I found... I found the figure of Coronation Starscream from, from, Star from the Transformers movie. So it is It is a figure of Starscream when he was leader of the Decepticons for all of 47 seconds. And then Galvatron came in and killed him. 
Yep. And then he wasn't there for the rest of the movie. Yeah. But I just, I love this version of Starscream because I always wanted him to be Leader of the Decepticons. I love he, he oh, like, dons this cape and this crown. He looks fucking awesome. What's sad is it doesn't transform. I would love to see his fucking jet mode with a crown on the cockpit and the cape flowing behind him. Yeah, no, so, like, this is the, the Red series where it just, like, concentrates more on the robot mode, which I'm fine with, because, yeah. All right. It is clock. It is a clock cape. Yeah. All right, so the revised opening, Live Devil, TV size, is posted. It's being sung by Da Ice, featuring Subaru Kimura, the voice of Ice. The, the voice. Also, that sounded better in my head. Also, I saw, I saw this on Twitter. It's pretty funny. Oh, yeah, Tango fucking Mazinger. <laughs> he has the Tango Rocket Punch. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call him the Tenzinger. I just love that they gave a Tango a fucking fist. <laughs> da Ice, that's good. Uh, all right, so yeah, TV size is out. We'll be yep. seeing the opening when episode two airs. I, anyways, I love this song. It's fucking dope. Yeah, it's pretty good. I like it. I think it's, I think I still like the insert song better, but this is pretty good. It is absolutely fucking K-pop. <laughs> yeah, it does sound like K-pop. This is not. This is alright. It's K-pop song. Yeah, I have a few K-pop songs. You got a few. All right, next. Uh, so we have some info from Revice's producer regarding the show's concept and its place in the series timeline. Yeah, so apparently they, with the, the crossover episode of Saber, they decided to drop the whole, oh, Kamen Rider's a show in Revice. So instead they kind of just pulled a Gokaiger where it's in its own universe where all the other riders, sh riders have existed at, like, one point. All right, so... This was during an interview with uh, the show's producer, Taku Mo Mochi Mochizuki. Uh, so when asked about the show's concept of Kamen Rider making a deal with the devil, <coughs> this inspiration apparently came right from Ichigo, because Ichigo was created by the Evil Shocker organization. Uh, as for the, this, this part's really interesting. The origins of the show's name. Uh, so he first came up with Vice because he wanted the name to be a gimmick uh, meaning bad habit or immoral, because it's a devil, so vice. As for Revi, apparently it came from the Hebrew word Levi, which means to connect, as well as the monster Leviathan. Huh. So Revice means connecting with the devil. Common Rider connecting with the devil. Doesn't really sound good, does it? <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I'm so glad I got the connecting with the devil driver. <laughs> the, could you imagine if it was the devil driver oh, that, that, I think it should have been called the devil driver I think no you know what Look, it, it's kind of got like it kind of looks like horns kind of you know what if it was called the devil driver not the revised driver that would absolutely be an indication that more riders were going to use it like Kamen Rider Debbie like, like the Sengoku driver she be she dead uh, let's see. As to how they ended up with stamps as the gimmick, they needed an item that expresses the act of pulling out the devil from the human body. He got the idea from his son playing with educational toys that you could freely draw and erase. So it's literally Common Rider etch a sketch. <laughs> so he saw his kid playing with a stamp and was like, "No, I think he saw his son playing with etch a sketch." And he was like. <laughs> fucking Toku Fanable. Bandai works. finds it feasible and interesting. <laughs> you can see them sitting there. Find that feasible and interesting. As to, it, sell it. as to how they ended up with the animal motif, uh, the idea of pulling something out of the body with a stamp, Mochizuki brought up biological genes as a motif, which evolved into the genetic information of an organism. They needed something strong for the basic form, and it was unanimously decided that no one is as strong as the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Mm. Plus, there's no Kamen Rider based on a T-Rex yet. That's true. Technically correct. I mean, Tiro is kind of like It's that. a form, not a base form. He's, he's got he's got Tyrannosaurus feet. Yeah. That's it. Uh, as to the big text message exchange during the transformation, it's become when when you search the word stamp online, the first results are all about line stamps or stickers. A.K.A. the e big emojis in, yeah. in text messages. Yeah, like on Facebook Messenger, you can get stickers. So. Um, for the show's continuity, it was decided not to go meta, in which Kamen Rider is a franchise that airs on TV. Instead, they take the Gokaiser approach 
for example, the windy city of Futo from Commodore Double can exist somewhere alongside the bookstore from Saber. So I think that's them saying that Ryder is one universe again. Yeah. So at least in Revice's world. I'm good. I, I'm I'm happy with that. That's that's cool. That opens more, the door for more possibly canonical crossovers. Yeah, who knows? Maybe like Drive will show up at some point. <laughs> They'll be like, cool. Yeah. Hey. Well, that's awesome. Like, I'm I'm really excited for this show. I really am. I think it's gonna be a fun one. Yeah, I'll talk about it when we get into the actual episode discussion. Yeah, but yeah this is a lot of very interesting and helpful information. So I'm glad I'm glad that the the creators of the show are being like very open about like their you know, thoughts on it and stuff. All right. Next, speaking of Gokaiser, we have some information regarding the 10 Gokaiser movie coming up. Uh, so we have the story behind the movie. Uh, though the Gokaiser came to Earth seeking the greatest treasure in the universe, they protected the, the planet from Zangyaku, came to believe that the Earth was worth protecting. Ten years have passed since then. The public gambling activity Super Sentai Derby Coliseum has been established on Earth and is popular across every generation. What the fuck? Wait, so they have like a battle royale for Sentai? Though the many Super Sentai heroes had been the targets of bets, they cooperate with the Coliseum Project as long as the money is used for defending the Earth. So people are placing bets on Super Sentai activities? Is that what's happening? Oh. However, one Super Sentai could not be contacted. That team has, had disbanded and each member gone on their separate paths. Captain Marvelous appears on Earth, issuing a challenge to the Coliseum's administration. Standing opposite from Marvelous is Guy Ikari, whose views match those of the Coliseums. Oh, no. Wow. All right, then. Uh, let's see. So several guests appear, many of which will be familiar. Uh, the Coliseum announcers, Akiro Maskota and Hiroya Matsumoto, are played by Kei Hosogai and Hiroya Matsumoto. Uh, Kei Hosogai played, oh, Bosco and Hiroya Matsumoto. Oh, so the, the announcers of the Coliseum are Bosco and Magiello, aka Buster. That's amazing. That's great. That's awesome. Uh, playing the ring announcer is Tomokazu Seki. Yep. The voice of the Mulverade. Yep. Now that sounds right. Sick. That's that's going to be awesome. Uh, the developer of the Derby Coliseum, Niwano, is played by Kaisei Kawano, who has not previously appeared in Tokusatsu. His role will be key to the story. Okay. Uh, the National Defense Minister, Jun Yamazaki, is played by the guy who played Hojo and Agito. Cool. Sick. Uh, Rikako Sakata, who played Mio in Forze, plays Ayano Koji in this movie. Oh. Uh, another associate, Horyuchi, played by Metal Yoshida. Fucking bravo. Yep. Sick. Oren Pierre Alfonso's in this. Yep. Uh, hailing from Cure Major. It, oh, Takamichi's in this. As Takamichi. Oh. Uh, topping off the guest list, Koro... Kaoruko, Ishii, and Rara Shimizu. They played the child versions of Mio and Kagura from Tokyuger. Hmm. They are high schoolers enjoying the Derby Coliseum. Cool. What a cast. Cool. Motherfucking Metal Yoshida, baby! Oh, yeah. Alright. Next. So, in the wake of Forze 10th Anniversary news came this surprising announcement. The DX Nadeshko driver. Yeah, so we're gonna build Nadeshkos. So that's cool. I, I always kind of liked it because it was very like just you, you push two buttons and then you henching. And it doesn't even have a lever. No, no, because she just press. She did. Yeah. She just pushes the lever, two levers down on either side, and then just goes. Eh. Yep. Because it's a it's it is a copy of the Forza driver. Yeah. So. Um. So yes, it comes with the rocket and radar switches that she ha that she had in her belt. And apparently this set also comes with some other miscellaneous switches. Yeah. Uh, one of which was the Nadeshko switch, which is a recolor of the launcher switch. This is the one that Forze used in conjunction with others to reach Nadeshko meteor fusion state. I don't even remember ever using that switch. So. I think it was in the Mega Max movie. Okay. Which is why that movie was just put out on the World yeah, Channel. Okay. Uh... 
The other one it comes with is the gate switch, which is used by Kengo to reach the rabbit hutch. I don't remember. I've never used that. I think that's like how he established the link. Okay. Uh, and then the Solu switch, which is a recolor of the, I forget which one that is. It's the third one. I forget what one that was. Oh, the drill? Maybe. Um, so that one was the switch that Nadeshko was turned into after they turned her back into goo. And it was used by the villain of the Mega Max movie to turn into Super Ginga O. Yes, I gotta rewatch Mega Max. Like, well, you can, because it's on Toy Toga Sense of the World! Apparently, in really shitty quality, though. Yes! Because I, I saw these three switches and I'm like, what the fuck are these? Oh, you know what switch that was? It's Magic Hand. Oh, Magic Hand, Magic Hand. Hand on. On. And it's a circle switch, so you can use it in the Nadeshko driver. Yeah, there you go. You can use Nadeshko! In an Esco. Actually, you can't. It's the next slot switch, and that slot is blocked well, out. Well, you said that the solar switch is what you got turned into. So. No, I know. I know. The the solar switch you can use, but you can't use the Nadeshko or the gate switch in the Nadeshko driver. Yes. You have to use the normal S4 as a driver. Yeah. Uh, so, yes, this premium Bandai web exclusive set, 8,800 yen, February 22 release. I would like to get this, but I probably won't. For a belt and five switches, that's not an awful price. No. Especially for one that did not exist prior. Oh, they had like quotes from our too. Oh. Yes. Yep. Erin Amano recorded lines for the driver, which you can play by pressing the items dialogue button. There you go. Surprising zero people. Oh, we go like a <laughs> yep. really it always bugged me how the belt like hung lopsided on her suit. Well, it's because it wasn't supposed to fit her. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, if she created it. It should fit. I, just, I always hate it when people would call her Kamen Rider not a Shiko. Yeah. It's like it's Nadeshko. Watch the fucking film. Yeah. It's like it's the Skintaro girlfriend. Yeah. Alright, next. Let's do. Some new images and information came out regarding the Kamen Rider double anime, Futo P.I. The anime adaptation of the manga that happens after the series. Looks good. It looks really good. It honestly makes me kind of wish that Philip had green hair the whole fucking show. Right? It looks so good. it would have made sense for him. This animation kind of reminds me of Tiger and Bunny a little. Yeah. Well, look, it's the... It's the Get it? Because, like, Shotaro's Tiger and Excel's Bunny. Imagine they got Tiger and Bunny to voice them. That'd be the best. That'd be awesome. Um, and yeah, there's the agency. Yep. That building's gone now. Yep. It's real sad. Alright, so the series will be directed by Yosuke Kabashima, who worked on Excel World. That's exciting. Uh, Ayataka Tanemura is the assistant director, who worked on Black Clover. Uh, Kabashima will also serve as Dopont animator, alongside Masahiro Yamane, who worked on the Brave Express Might game. In addition, Tatsuto Higuchi, who worked on Review Starlight, will write the scripts. Along with Kamen Rider Double, Head Rider, and Fuku P.I. Rider Riku Sanjo as script supervisor. So the show is being well handled, especially by Riku Sanjo, who was one of the main people behind Double itself. So yeah, this should be really good. Beam. The, fe the show features character designs by Hidakazu Ibina, who worked on Amazing Stranger. Uh, will also serve as chief animation director alongside Sei Komatsubara, who worked on the Ordinal Scale SAO movie. I enjoyed that. Yeah. Uh, brother, a bunch of animators. Yeah, was it a firefighting movie? I don't think it's something else. No, that was Pramare. That was Pramare, that's right. That movie was fucking rad. That was a rad movie. Uh, let's see. Kotaro Nakagawa and Shuhei Narusei, who both worked in a lot of Kamen Rider soundtracks, will return to work on the music for Futo <sighs> P.I. You know what's going to be awesome, though? Especially because this is an anime adaptation now. Double henching is going to be so oh, shit. fucking awesome. Yeah, it is. Like, I can already see that it's going to be like, he, like they do like the Cyclone Joker, and then when he just like unleashes the belt, just this giant fucking Cyclone is just going to oh, yeah. you're just going to hear da -da 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 boom, boom, boom. Yep. His eyes will fucking glow, he'll come out of the wind, and then he'll do his catchphrase. And the series is being animated by Studio Kai. Ooh, wow. Uh, it looks pretty. Currently planned for summer 2022 release. Hey, you know what? That's cool, because Tiger and Bunny 2 also comes out next year. Yeah. So. I feel like this could be worthy of another side series. Yeah, no, I'm down. 
Let's see what happens. Yeah, maybe we can make David on you or something. Mm. All right, next. We have images for the upcoming Zenkaiger Dark Sentai gear set. Yep, Stacy got an upgrade, so he gets more gears. Yeah. So they are purple colored versions of the following Legend Sentai gears. Bioman, Car Ranger, Mega Ranger, Go Go Five, Hurricane, Abba Ranger, Decker Ranger, Go Under, Go Kaiser, Ninja, Zuoja, Q Ranger, Ryu Soldier, and Q Major, as well as Dark Sentai gears based on the Zenkaigers. Juran, Galan, Majine, Varun, as well as Two Kaiser, Riki, and Katanner. So that's 21 Dark Sentai gears, all of which are obviously compatible with the Gear to Zinger. Premium Bandai Web Exclusive, 60-50 yen, January release. Six, so basically 60, 70 bucks for 21 gears. There you go. That's a pretty good price. Yeah. I just like that Stacey can tactically summon his own Senkai gears if he wants to. Yeah. That'd actually be cool to see that Dark Senkai gears. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Fucking uh, two Kaiser in like nice black and purple. Yeah. That'd be cool. All right. All right. Next. Next. SH Figure Arts Kamen Rider Zero One Rising Hopper 50th Anniversary Version. <laughs> why? It's Zero One, but again. Okay, why? Uh. We already have like four different versions of this figure. We got the regular Rising Hopper, we got like the translucent version, we have Realizing Hopper, and now we have this one. It's literally just the same figure in a different box. <sighs> Some fucking Zero One. God damn it. I don't know why I'm Zero this. one more time, that's good. <laughs> There's the episode name. Uh, one more time. Sign a zero one. Thank you, Scott, you opening your wallet. That was awful. Anyway, so whoever does want it, it's only 3,300 yen, which yeah. is a disgustingly good price for a figure art. Yeah. Especially that's what with, happens when they re-release the same figure again. Especially with as good as Rising Hopper, it's a good suit. Yeah. And it's releasing in December, just in time for Crimbus. For Chrysler. Fight for all your kitties. Yep. Alright, next. This one came out of nowhere. SH Figure It's Renewal Comrade or Kuga Rising Ultimate. I just... I, I, I don't like this, because I don't like... That, that one time, Yusuke got fucking ripped. Like... <sighs> I just don't, I never liked the concept of Rising Ultimate because just like, it kind of defeats how awesome Ultimate is. Because it's supposed to be Kuga's strong. No, oh, but it, 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 logic stands that this thing should exist because like, he had his four base forms and then Rising form. And then if there's an Ultimate form, there should be a Rising Ultimate form. I guess so. I guess I just don't like it because it's like, it's too loud. Like, there's just too much going it for it. It just bugs me that he's so weirdly buff. Yeah. Because, like, I, Kuga's a straight Okay, man. I was going to say good. He comes with black eye. Bro. Oh, yeah, yeah. Both heads. Red eye and black eye. Yeah, because it looks better with the black eyes, honestly. Doesn't mean evil. Eh, okay. I, I don't think I prefer it one way or the other. Well, it's the red eyes make him look like Agito. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I like the black. I just hope he comes, up with a th he comes with a thumbs up hand. Because uh... the, ori the original did. I, I don't see it, if I, it is. I hope so. That's Kuga's standard thing. I know he never gave a thumbs up in Ultimate, but... It just says interchangeable hands, and I don't see it in any of the pictures. Okay. Um, so this Premium Bandai Web Exclusive, 7,700 yen January release. I guess it, I guess it's just it bugs me because it was only a one-time thing. Like, we never ever saw it again. At least I'm sure we didn't see that again. I'm, it again. I think it showed up at some point, but, like, not in a significant way. Uh, I think it might have showed up in the Wizard, like... Episode of Decade? I don't like know. When he turned into Kuga, he went Rising Ultimate. I don't know. I don't know. It's, eh. I, I prefer regular Ultimate. Alright, next. Some really sad, unfortunate news. Yeah. Uh, Gact, one of the pillars of J Rock, the singer of the Decade theme song, uh, not dead, before anyone panics, uh, will be halting. Activities indefinitely due to a voice disorder. Yeah, so he has some kind of disorder that like fucked up his vocal cords, and yep. so he basically can't like talk. Uh, it, apparently it's dysphonia, a chronic neurological disease. Uh, 
He's lost 10 kilograms in his weight, but his condition is stable now. So we're all praying for his recovery. Yeah, this this is real sad because, like, when you listen to the Decade theme song, my god, it's so good. It's so epic. It gets you fucking hyped up for the for the show. And yeah. Like, the fact that Toei got gacked. Because, like, this was around when Gact was just, like, fucking oh, yeah. peak. The height so, of his, one of the heights of his popularity. The music video was really good, too. Yeah. It's just him, like, walking around. There's, like, a camera fucking, like, rotating around. Oh, that like, sex saying, rotating camera shot is decades great. Decades fighting a fucking monster or something like that, always saying. It, it was just a really good theme. And, like, it's just he was a really good singer. And then he showed up in, as Rider Man in the Double Decade movie. He was supposed to be Rider Man, and they didn't, like, film that part, those parts. Yeah. And then he, he also sung your least favorite song the next decade. <laughs> it's not my least favorite song. No, you, you don't like it. You're I, the next! I just don't have very strong feelings for it. Yeah, I like it. Alright, so hopefully he recovers soon. Well, he he probably won't, like, recover fully 100%, but, like, yeah. you know, hopefully it doesn't bother him as much as it does now. So, yeah. All right. Also, that's gacked in the all caps, Jerry. Nickelodeon gacked. <laughs> it's him in that fucking pool game. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, look it up. You can find a clip of gacked playing pool, fucking up a shot, and cursing. He's yell as fuck. All right. I like E.T.'s better, though, because he thought he said, God damn fuck! I don't know why I thought that. I must have been looking at some other clip, but for some reason, I thought after he, like, when he was breaking his cool that cue that he was just uh, shouting, God damn fuck! That would have been funnier. But yeah, he just yeah. says, fuck! <laughs> yep. All right, next. This is also sad news, but uh, Shinichiro Sawai, uh, a director of many tokusatsu series, such as Shider and Juko B-Fighter. Oh. Has passed away oh. due to organ failure. Oh, at the age of eighty-three. Oh. That sucks. This whole what I've seen, Beef Fighter is a pretty cool show. Now uh, let's see. He made his directorial debut with The Wild Daisy in nineteen eighty-one, followed up with award-winning films Doubles, Tr- W's Trout, Tragedy, Early Spring Story. Uh, yeah. In addition to Shider, Juko Beef Fighter. He also worked on Genghis Khan to the ends of the earth and sea. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then that's when he started having health issues. And after his passing, his wife, Kyoko, was quoted accordingly. He dreamed of standing on set one more time, but has departed without fulfilling that dream. To remember him, there is no better way to honor his memory than to, than to watch his films once more. So go out and watch those things. All right. Next, moving to some happier news. Uh, it's been kind of the talk of the Tokusatsu verse the last week that Power Rangers Dino Fury has debuted the franchise's first confirmed television series, LGBTQ Ranger, in the form of Izzy, the Green Dino Fury Ranger, has been shown to be lesbian. Yeah, because like the, the how the scene goes is like. I guess like her her stepbrother is like interested in in this girl, and then like he like he's like oh I don't know how to ask her or whatever like that and like and then like uh, the other guy with him just kind of goes like look and he sees Izzy talking to the girl that he has the crush on and then they walk off holding hands and he's like oh yeah awesome so that's that's great like she's already proved that she's a really strong character because like you know she she transform she morphed for the first time and then she took the skirt off her fucking suit because she doesn't like skirts which is an amazing way to make it more accurate to the sentai footage yeah and then yeah so no that's fucking amazing so imagine we got like a transgender ranger oh yeah bless me no that'd be fucking awesome this is an important this is an important step and i look forward to seeing more it is uh oh yeah and according to jerry her actress is also just as happy about it that's great yeah Oh, did um, we talk about Lord Zedstone now? We did last week. Did we? Oh yeah, yeah we did. We got like cool, cooler like close-up photos of him. He looks fucking awesome. Lord Zed is shredded. Yeah, Lord Sh- Zedded. Lord Zedded. Zedded. Um, but of course, this isn't though. This is the first TV series LGBTQ Ranger. It's not the first time the franchise has had them. No. We all remember Trini from the 2017 movie. Yup. 
Uh, and we also have uh, Ilarian and Remy from the Solar Ranger team in the comics. Uh, but this is the first time on a TV series. So yeah, excellent. Yeah, also, I can't wait to get the bites from. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope it has like one of his quotes. It's just him farting. I really hope it has that. Yeah. Also, I made that. I made that my uh, my lock screen once, didn't you? So. Yeah. yeah. I found a picture of it straight on and just extracted it from the toy images. Yeah. I like having the con I like having the concept of the uh, vice being on my phone. Mm. All right, and that's the news. Yay. Good half hour of news. Light news week. Yep. My Saturday morning will be over real soon. There you go. And then I will publish the episodes. Oh, this is going to see you for that. <laughs> because I'm too on key. Well, actually, not Simpsons. Disney. <laughs> Whichever. You don't want to get sued by the mouse. All that matters is they saw our episode. Don't fuck with the mouse, Ichi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll see you, everyone. See you on the show proper. Boy.